Can I just say thank you for being here today? It's so, it's so funny. I woke up this morning, saw the rain out, and so if you follow on social media, I posted a little something that said, hey, don't let a little rain keep you away from God's house. And so I just want to say to you, thank you for being here. And it's, this is a side sidebar, doesn't have anything to do with the message, but, but just, just humor me for a little bit. Can I just tell you, by your presence here, you are, are demonstrating one of the beautiful benefits of being involved in being involved in a community of faith. And that's not just to be a consumer, but to be a, a giver of what God has given to you in your conversations and in your prayer time. And so I just want to say thank you because there are, there are people that need what you have received from the Lord they need in conversation. So just be active in that space. And uh, I believe that the body of Christ grows in that. You guys do such a phenomenal job with that as well. The last two weeks, like I said, been um, on, a, on a trip with some of the men here at the church. Just phenomenal time of conversation and, and seeing what God is doing all over the world through generosity, through our Kingdom Builders partners. We were in, in Tanzania. I was two weeks ago on Sunday, preached at a, a church there in Dar Salaam, Tanzania and uh, just an incredible um, energetic place of worship with one of our Kingdom Builders partners. It was just a, a fun time. Then got on a plane from Tanzania and flew down to South Africa and spent the rest of the time there seeing what God's doing and, and uh, through the ministry of another one of our Kingdom Builders partners. Here's what I, I learned. Number one is that God is doing tremendous things all over the world despite what you may see, um, you know, controversy or whatever in the church. The church is still moving forward and God has a plan and he doesn't allow any of our slip ups or mistakes to, to get in the way of that, that he is God and that his, his advancement of his kingdom is going forward. Second thing I learned is it's really important to spend time with, with other believers, with godly men and women. And, uh, the, one of the purposes of the trip that I took with these guys was just, uh, I call it windshield time. And there's no better place to, um, uh, develop relationships and go deep with people than just spending time with them. And so I just wanted to model that to some of the men here at the church. It was just awesome. It was just cool to see some guys that, that, uh, you know, maybe had not ever really been close friends just immediately, you know, bam, oh, now we're going to be, they didn't use the term BFF because that's not manly, right? But it was just those relationships that were, were built. It was really pretty fun. The last two weeks at, when I was gone, can I just brag a little bit? Calvary Church is so blessed to have an incredible staff of gifted pastors, communicators, men and women of God. And, uh, the last two weeks, if you weren't here, um, two weeks ago, uh, Pastor Kim preached a message uh, that was, um, I have passed this message link around to so many different people in ministry and, and just that are, are wrestling with some of the deep issues. Preached a message titled, Why Does My Sexuality Matter to God? And it's in this series, Can I Ask That, right? And I'm telling you, if you missed it, it was a masterpiece of how God has created us. I'm telling you. <clears throat> I'm obviously biased in that, but take that bias away and prove me wrong. Like, you just go, it's amazing. And uh, uh, Kim, you did a tremendous job handling that. And then last week, um, if you noticed, there was two pretty hot topics that Pastor left and let the, let the other guys tackle it, right? So Pastor Clayton did an, an incredible job dealing with politics and government. And, and what does Jesus say about it? How should we, we navigate those conversations? And, and even this morning, you'll hear some of the comments that were impacted from that message. Just keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the ball and don't get distracted by things that, that really in eternity may not matter as much as we think. So Pastor Clayton, thank you for your ministry. It was awesome. <clears throat> I have a little bit of disclaimers. I'm, I'm breaking all the communication rules at the beginning, just I'm asking you to have forgiveness a little bit uh, for my voice. And I've got some tea that's gonna help me a little bit. And I know my personality and styles, if I'm moving around walking and, and getting after it, that I'll, I'll try a little bit harder with my voice. So I'm, I'm tying myself to a chair this morning so that I can uh, protect uh, a voice a little bit. It's been amazing. I, I cover your prayers the Monday after Easter. Uh, it just hit me, and I have not been able to shake it since then, and um, it's been tough. So just be praying and uh, for God to just continue to heal my voice. And Kim and I, we've got a couple of ministry um, um, opportunities this weekend. Um, we'll, I'll be here back, back on Sunday, so I'm not breaking my rule. Um, but uh, 
Kim and I will be traveling to Dallas to speak uh, to a youth pastor's retreat there in Dallas. And I'm so honored that um, uh, if, if there's anybody on the planet that I would consider one of my spiritual sons, uh, Spencer, uh, Pastor Spencer asked me to come and speak. And so I said, yes, and I'm going to go and speak. And Kim, we're going to go tackle uh, some issues with young leaders. And so just pray that God will protect uh, the voice and, and all that uh, he was asking us to do. Well, let's dive into God's word. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, all right, all right, just making sure, just making sure. So we're in part three of this series, Can I Ask That? The heart behind that is that sometimes there's these questions that we um, uh, feel like in, in, in church circles that may not be necessarily a uh, free game to ask. We dealt with sexuality two weeks ago, politics and Jesus. Today, I wanna talk to you about the, the topic that uh, is, is an interesting, uh, hopefully going to be a reminder but maybe it'll, it'll push some of us to grow in our health overall in our lives. And that is the question, are my physical, mental, and spiritual health, are they all connected? Are my physical, mental, spiritual, you could put in several different phrases there, relational, emotional, all, but are they, are they all connected? And we're gonna, we're gonna wrestle with that. So as a, uh, as a, as a point of illustration, this past week, uh, we celebrated in our family my youngest daughter's 21st birthday. And it was just fun, so it was awesome. You guys are in the clappy mood, I'm, a, I'm a, whatever. <coughs> uh, so you, you know this, when you have children that celebrate big birthdays, right? They're, and really anything under 21 is a big birthday. Beyond this, Chloe, she's not in this service this morning, but uh, beyond this, it's just another day, right? So now this was it. It was the end of the line, but 21 was a big day. And uh, for this to be our youngest to celebrate 21, many of you know Chloe's story. Um, it's just uh, God's grace. So we, we celebrated Chloe and we highlighted her. Kim and, and some friends went to Charleston for a few days and sat on the beach and just did a little girl time and celebrated Chloe. And that is right. And we should do that, right? There are those moments when we highlight our children at different levels and we, we elevate them and, and, and say, we're going to honor this child, this, this, this season or this day. Birthdays obviously are the natural um, time in that. And if your kids are anything like mine, there, there is also in the background of all these types of highlight moments, this ongoing debate within them of Who's the favorite? Yeah. Right? Oh wait, your your kids aren't uh, my you know the, on a spiritual whatever. But my kids, man, I'm telling you, and and usually usually it's like lighthearted and joking. But there are those occasions, especially when they were younger, when it got a little bit heated, right? When one um, method of discipline they perceived to be different than the other. And, and, and there was this idea, you know, ongoing, who, who is the favorite? Um, and it's usually directed to those that are the babies of the family, right? Can you, is, are there any babies, of the, the youngest children? Are, man, there is not too many of us in this room. Yeah, I, I see you, Monica. I appreciate, Jim, I would have guessed that. So I'm just teasing. Uh, so no, um, <laughs> I'm the baby of the family as, as well. And it's usually the, the question, who is, who is the favorite? It's usually kind of slanted to, towards the youngest. Like I said, usually with a little bit of lighthearted. Can I tell you that this, this idea of elevating one over the other, it's not just unique to family dynamics. In fact, Jesus, when he was walking with the disciples, he had, it wasn't necessarily always between siblings, but he did have two siblings come to him one day in Matthew 18 and, and, and uh, actually in Mark 10, James and John, they said, hey, when you, when you come into your kingdom, can we just be your favorites? Can we, can we be the ones that sit on your right and your left? Let us, let us be that place. Matthew 18, the disciples come and they say, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? We all, we all have this tendency in our lives to, to, to play favorites. We all, to, to elevate one. And we, as parents, right, we don't, we don't ever want to tip our hand and, and whatever. But uh, Chelsea, Chandler, and Chloe, I do have a favorite. And it's up to you the rest of your life to prove that you're that one. No, I'm just teasing. It went, <laughs> but, but, but there is that tendency for at least that perception to, to be there. When we look at scripture, 
um, and how that God has created us. I love the way Kim set up this, this series even that, that our sexuality matters to God because our, our, our person, who we are, we were created in the image of God. And so if we bring that principle into our topic today, then this idea of playing favorites, if you allow me to have a little liberty to stretch that principle into how we treat our own individual lives, we get into really um, um, some challenging circumstances and, and, and a negative perception, a negative reflection of who God is in our lives when we quote, play favorites in the different elements of our lives. I say it this way, that when we focus on our physical over or at the expense of our mental or spiritual, it provides a distortion of the image of God to the world. When we focus on our mental at the expense of our physical or spiritual, the distortion is equally present. When, it, when we just focus on spiritual, then, then that distortion of the image of God can be very very present in our lives as well. So when we tackle this idea of physical, mental, and spiritual health, the answer to the question, are they connected, is absolutely yes, and that is because of who we are created in the image of. I, I wrote down some different um, ideas, and again, these are overstating, but they're overstating for effect. So just please understand, and, and I mentioned with the all team uh, just a minute ago with our, our serve team, I said, hey, this is one of those messages that there will be a few confession points for me, but then also we, we better you know, put steel-toed boots on a little bit, don't be offended, and, and just understand, have a little bit of grace, because there's probably, I could, I could give balancing statements to every statement, I, uh, whatever, but, but there's this idea of the wholeness of the health that God is calling us to in order to be a great reflection of his grace. So when we get out of balance and we, quote, play favorites, and I know it's not intentional, but when we focus on one area of our life, Lives at the expense of another, there are things that can happen. For instance, if we focus on our physical health above all other things, then we could end up being a mental wreck who dies without Jesus, but you're in really good shape. If we focus on our mental health above our physical and our spiritual, then, then we'll end up trying to reason our way into a right relationship with the Lord because we're so smart, we can do this. If we focus on just our spiritual health and let our physical and mental health go down the tubes, so to speak, your life is not going to accurately reflect to the world a picture of health. That's kind of convicting, right? That if our physical and mental health has been abused or neglected, but yet we all just invest in our spiritual health, which is absolutely, uh, from eternity standpoint, it's, it's the foundational. I get it. I understand that. But if we're not careful and we lean into that at the neglect of some of these other areas of our lives, then we, we won't be a good reflection of the image of God to the world. You say, Pastor John, what do you mean? Well, the best way I can describe it is this. I, I had a friend of mine who was, uh, who was going into ministry and we were in Bible college together. <coughs> and he, uh, he had let his health get out of, out of balance a little bit physically. And uh, he had some mentors in his life that uh, pulled him aside one day and he told me about this and, and it was just kind of a convicting moment. And he, he told him, he said, he said, if you don't get this physical um, health issue in check, then your voice and the influence that you have when you proclaim the message of the cross will be impacted because of what people see. He was telling them, hey, lose some weight, dude in a loving whatever way. And I'm like, wow, that was convicting. And, and I'm like, whoo, okay, that's, that's, but the truth of it is, is that if God has created us as these, these, these holistic beings, physical, mental, and spiritual, then why wouldn't we want to offer every part of our lives back as an offering of worship to the Lord? It just, it just serves to reason. So we're gonna tackle this. Why or how are they related? Are these areas related? Because they're the image of God in our lives and they must be stewarded well. So we're gonna talk about three. I just wanna put three main scriptures in, in the, the course of the conversation for discussion here today. Genesis chapter one, verse 27 is the first one. So God 
created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Healthy plants, healthy organisms are fruitful. Unhealthy things are not. When we allow our lives to be unhealthy, we are going against the very first purpose that God had plant, has planted in our lives. Let me give a little disclaimer here and, and give you to understand. I am not talking about every time there is a, a sickness or an infirmity that comes against your body that somehow is an indicator of your neglect of your health. We live in a fallen world. There are things that come against us that please understand. That's not being critical. It doesn't signify a lack of faith. It doesn't signify lack of discipline in your life. Not always, right? There, there, are, there are ramifications of this world we live in that are beyond our control. So please understand, I get that. But then there are those things that are in our control. And that's what we wanna talk about today. It goes on in scripture to talk about the ideas that our bodies are really important to the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse one and two. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Isn't that interesting connection there between the physical and the mental, the, the way we think? There is a direct connection. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. It's almost as if the Lord is saying to you to, and to me uh, that if we'll get all of these things understanding the connection of all of them, if we'll understand that our, our mental and how we, we think about the things of the Lord and how we process the truths of scripture, they, they really do impact our behaviors and our customs and, and they should change the way we think and act and do. And as a result of that, our bodies will be an act of worship to the Lord. This connectedness is a theme of scripture. In fact, Jesus encountered this same thing in Matthew chapter 22, it says when the, in verse 34, when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question, verse 36. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Second is equally important, love your neighbors yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. In verse 37, when he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, he's quoting from Deuteronomy chapter six, and it's the, this, this prayer that they would have been very familiar with, and, and it, it expands the elements with which we're to love the Lord and with, and it says our heart, our soul, and our strength, our physical, he was referring back to this totality of worship that we are to offer to the Lord who he has created us to be, we bring back our bodies as a living sacrifice to him. It's almost as if we have, you know, if, if we're out of balance in those areas, we're, we're playing favorites. We're, we're elevating one child over the other and, and we would never do that. But in our lives, sometimes we, we fall into this this trap of being out of balance. So today, I wanna to tackle two of them because I, 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 I'm gonna go based upon an assumption that almost, almost every other Sunday, we're talking about our spiritual health. That in, in these moments here, we're giving tools and diving into God's word to, to, to learn how to develop our spiritual health. So today, I wanna to really focus on two that we don't necessarily tackle that often, and that's how our physical and mental health can be something that we should, as disciples of Jesus, 
We should be very intentional in how we steward the health in those areas. Let's dig in. Number one, physical. So this is one that um, I told my wife this morning. I said, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit conflicted because this is one of those areas that I feel uh, there's, a, there's a tinge of, of, of hypocritical in this because I am in a season right now where I need to listen to what I'm saying here because I'm, I'm obviously just kind of running it thin a little bit. And uh, I know that there are moments when you have to recalibrate and take care of yourself physically. And so um, I, I, I recognize the irony. In fact, uh, you saw Bria a minute ago on the announcement video. Bria's uh, working in the office, and I said something to her the other day. I said, Bria, help me. Uh, my schedule, I'm not, I'm not scheduling myself very very smartly because it's a little bit thin, right? Said, yeah, absolutely. And, and so you need to fix that. And so I get it. I understand that. Another piece of, of, of where I wish I would have been, and uh, Matt Rand, who works at the office, I talked to Matt several months ago. I said, Matt, dude, the scale, it's just kicking my tail. My, I'm just like, it is mean. Like the scale at my house, it is just ugly and, and just whatever. And we were joking, obviously. I said, help me. We got to do some things. And so uh, we, we had the conversation a little bit. And uh, it was a good talk that ended in very little action on my part. So honestly, I knew I was gonna speak on this issue today, and I really, really had a goal of being able to sit in front of you and say, I have, I have lost this many pounds, and I am whatever, and I did not reach that goal today. And so pray for your pastor, there's some, there's some work to do. So I understand that, that this application, it gets here. But, but if we're not careful, life gets really busy, and we, we allow our disciplines to slip, we just do. For my own life, um, that, that, is, that, is a, that is a red flag for me, and I'm just being transparent with you today that I, I imagine we're all pretty much the same in this. When you, have, when you have slips in one area of your life, it's like the Lord is sending up a, an alert to say be careful that there are not slips in other areas of your life too. Why? Because we're all connected. We're all, we're all related, and when health goes down in one area, it drags the other area as well. So for me, that's an indicator. It's like, okay, time out, you know, get recalibrate uh, moments there. If we let our, our physical health slip, this is Pastor John opinion, okay, so please understand, I think there's, there's truth behind this in scripture, but I'm not basing all my theology on this, this is my um, educated opinion. If we let our physical health slip, we damage our witness, We say, I'm not really worried about that. I can eat every type of junk food. I can do whatever else. And my body is, ah, just whatever. I'm just fun. That's just not who I am. I'm not, I'm not one of those health nuts or whatever. When I read through scripture, when I say, when I read that passage in Romans where it says, let us offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Can you imagine coming to the Lord with a, with a damaged gift with a gift that you have not cared for well and saying, God, this is, this is back to you. We would never do that. And yet, when, we not, when we're not focused on our physical health, it's as if we are, we are having that posture. It's not, it's not my personality. Well, then change it. Then, then change your actions, change your activities. Interesting, we read in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 that anyone that is in Christ is a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. And we, we apply that principle very freely to our spiritual acts of worship and how we are spiritually. But the truth of it is there's no distinction in that verse that, that when we are in Christ, there is a, and there's an ability that, that through his spirit, he gives us to be renewed in, in all of our behaviors. So I just wanna encourage you, lean in to taking care of the temple that God has given to be a dwelling place of his spirit and a witness to the world. Our physical health, it really does matter. If we're new people in Christ, then, then, then do new things, act in a new way, change from the old. Um, it does have impact on, what we, on how we reflect to the world. I'm wondering how many um, spouse elbow nudges are going insides right now, so it's, it's interesting. 
<clears throat> excuse me, our eating habits, our physical habits, our sleep habits, they're all about taking care of the body that get God has given you. Hopefully this isn't a new thing to you. It's a reminder as someone that cares for you to say, hey, take care of the temple. I was reading, uh, my wife actually put me onto this. There's a documentary that she saw and I did some work, uh, some research on it yesterday. Um, did you know that there are these areas in the, in the world that scientifically they've done studies on the, the demographics of all the studies that they're, they're called blue zones. You, do, you, you may have done some research on this, this area. Blue zones. Blue zones are, they've identified five specific areas of the world where people live longer than anywhere else on the planet. Like the, the longevity of their life is, is increased at, at levels that are, that are statistical would be considered like anomalies, right? They're, they're just, wow, why are these areas so much different? Well, if God's created all of us and he wants our bodies to be a living sacrifice, then I think it would, it would be a good service for us to look at how can we um, uh, get the most out of this body that God has given to us so that we could be continuing to be a witness to the world. If, if that's, that's our purpose on this planet, then, then it would, it would do well, we would do well to steward that well. So these blue zones are interesting. Um, one of them's in, uh, uh, Sardinia, Italy. Another one's in Okinawa, Japan. One of them's in Nicoya, N-I-C-O-Y-A, Costa Rica. One of them's in Loma Linda, California, and one's in Icaria, Greece. And I'm probably mispronouncing some of those, but general, it's really all over, not just confined to one particular area of the word, the world. And what they did is they went in and they studied why are these people in these areas living so long? Like there's, there's more people over 100 in these areas and all the stats, you, you dive in and do some research there. But I, I went through some of these and I thought, you know what? These are actually really good principles that would help us offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord and steward that physical health even, even more. Um, one of the, the characteristics of those in the blue zones, they, it says this, this phrase, they move naturally. In other words, they walk a lot. There's, there's areas that, that, that they don't, you know, man, I just, I have got to find the closest spot in that parking lot to target because that 30 feet that I, it's just going to zap me, right? It's, it's so funny. Costco, let's go there, right? You will fight and you will sit in that parking spot for minutes with your blinker on and edge into that spot, right? So that you can only walk 30 feet to the door and then you're going to walk two and a half miles within the store looking for that, whatever. It's, it's so funny that our, our mindset is, is I, I, it's convenience is key, right? Well, in these blue zones, it's the exact opposite. It's, it's like, how can we walk? How can we you know, get our steps in, right? And there's some beauty in that. But, but what they found is that as we move, as we are created to, you actually live longer. And that's, you know, that should be a gigantic, well, duh, in all of our mind. But it's, it's true. It has impact. The second thing they found out about these people is they have a sense of purpose, they, they know why they exist. There's a, there's a purpose to their lives. It, it helps them live longer. Isn't that interesting? The very thing that God's created us to be, to be a, a reflection of his, God, of his grace in the community, it actually helps us sustain our physical health. Third, they, have a, they call it an intentional downshift. In other words, they know practical ways to release stress. Could be that they rest, could be they socialize, could be that they have times of prayer. Side note here, did you know every Wednesday night at seven o'clock, we have a group of people that meet here in this room that's open to every one of you. What a great time to recharge and, and to pray and rest and relieve stress and soak in what God is speaking in and through us. You need intentional places like that. Another thing that the characteristics of those in blue zones, they stop eating when they're 80% full. I grew up in the South, right? And uh, I, I, uh, my, I love my mom and dad, and I, I love my parents. I love our upbringing. But this, this was probably not our greatest strength in life, right? 
I can, and we make jokes about it. We still do it to this day. Thanksgiving, what do we do? Oh boy, I need to undo the belt a little bit. We just, we, we, we just have it in it. And boy, it'd be one thing if it was just Thanksgiving, right? Why do we have all you can eat buffets every, why do we have, oh, you get this. And we just, oh, you know, but people that live longer actually don't do that. Pastor John, you're, you're meddling now. Well, maybe just a little. One of the things about Blue Zones is they eat less meat and more vegetable-based diets. This one makes me mad. I don't like that one, but it's true, and I'll say it. So give me some beef, and it'll be good. So uh, another thing about them, they, they belong to a faith-based community. Physically, your life is extended when you do some of these things. Isn't that interesting? These are not necessarily um, areas that are, are Christian, so to speak, but they are belonging to a faith-based community and has impact on the longevity of their life. Finally, they have strong family connections. Or one of the phrases it says they belong to a tribe, a group of people that has, has similar connections there. It's all interesting. You could go down that list right there and say, hey, that's, that's why small groups are a big deal. That's why attendance and, and being involved in the house of the Lord, it's a big deal. That's why rest, Sabbath, that's why it's a big deal, right? Our physical health is, is really important. I, I thought about doing some practical things here, um, and I'll give you one maybe as a parenting hack technique. My, my wife is, is better at this space than me, and I've grown to be healthier in this space because of her. And I, I owe a lot um, to, to her and, and her uh, intentionality in this space. But raising our kids, this was always a challenge to us. And so one of the things you're not supposed to do is step on parenting, and I'm gonna do it right now, so just please forgive me in advance. But uh, we had some friends of ours when our kids were younger that uh, we used to cringe whenever they would go over to their houses uh, to eat, but they were great people, but not for any really bad thing. But we knew that when they went over to these people's houses that they probably were going to have cheese puffs or cheese whiz or like, you know, I don't know, dirt for dinner or whatever. It was just not going to eat healthy at all. We knew it and our kids loved it, right? They were just, they thought it was the best thing ever, but they knew when they went over to that house, it was just going to be garbage in, right? <coughs> And so that was different. In our house, we had a rule that, uh, and Kim did this, it was a great parenting tool, I'll give it to you. I've had this conversation with our staff. Our kids had a list of three things that they could put on their veto list that they couldn't, that they would say, I just don't like that, I'm not gonna eat that. Only three. And they had to be really careful what three things they put on that list, right? And obviously, there's some things that, that there's physical textures and all that stuff. So we let them, let them put three things on that list. Anything else, if it was in front of you, you ate that stuff, right? And our kids learned to love that rule now when they're older and, and they're pretty healthy. In fact, I see my son, he's, you know, and, and he and his, his wife are, are really focused on healthy eating. And I'm seeing some of the things he's cooking and he's calling Kim and talking about recipes. And I'm like, dear Lord Jesus, it worked. It worked. It was awesome. Just why is that important? Because as we steward our own physical lives, we've been Held, we, we are responsible for helping our children be physically healthy in who they are and how, how they eat is an important thing. I will stop meddling there. Let's go to number two. How do we steward the health of our mental, in our, our mental health? Did you know that there was a, a Barna study uh, done but, uh, with non-practicing Christians? In other words, people that weren't really fully committed. And they said, of, the, of that group, 74% of them said that they would be interested in attending a church that offered teaching or programs on mental health. Three-fourths of them. What's that saying? It's saying there's a need, there's an awareness in our world for biblical viewpoints of how we navigate our mental health. When I grew up in church, and many of you may have this experience, that this was a topic, you know, you, you, don't, you don't talk about sex and you don't talk about mental health. Because, you know, just pray, pray it through and you'll, you'll be okay, right? That was the posture. Well, the truth of it is, is that God's word is pretty clear that, that, that there is, there's, there's principles to apply so that we could be healthy mentally. 
how we think really does impact who we are. Boy, there's a, there's a huge message there, a series that we could do on that as far as training, training your mind. But, but the truth of it is we must not be afraid to talk about it. Mental health, it's a complex part of who we are and, who, and, and how we owe our lives as a, as a place of worship to God. <coughs> Excuse me. So the principle is, is simple. We should take care of our mental health. Can I be honest with you that sometimes... That involves professional help. I believe that God in moments of prayer and the laying on of hands can heal everything in our bodies. I believe that with all my heart. Sometimes that is instantly. Other times he's given us the wisdom to be able to seek help in areas that we're struggling in that we need some help. For far too long, there's just been this stigma of we can't, we can't admit or we can't talk about that or, or oh, that's, you just don't have enough faith. My goodness. The, the next time someone comes in with a, a, you know, a cold or a limp or broken leg or whatever, we never say, oh, you just don't have enough faith. No, you, you need to go to a doctor, you whatever. But the truth of it is, is as it relates to our mental health, if God has created us physically, mentally, and spiritually, then, then we should, should lean into st- stewarding health in all of those areas in the methods that God has given us to, um, to help in those areas. I see a counselor. It is amazing. It's not anybody in the church. It's not anybody that is in this bubble. It's someone that I can go and say, hey, I just, in fact, we had the conversation with my counselor. I said, I'm, I'm paying you to be my friend and just download and, and process. And it, it helps mental health. It's a Christian counselor. Please understand, there are people that can, can do more harm than good. So hear me clearly, please, biblical worldview, understand God's created you, help you in that, because people can mess you up. But I, I, I do that, and, and I, I would encourage you in those spaces that if there are those areas of, of lack of health in your body and in your mental well-being, find somebody to help. It could be that you start in, in that space with one of the pastors on staff here. And you say, hey, do you got time to, to, to chat? Let me just process. And, and if there are those areas that we can help, we would love to. There may be those areas that we say, hey, this, this is, is beyond our level of expertise and we wanna recommend you to a Christian counselor. And that doesn't mean there's any kind of taboo about it. It just means just go get help. Like we wanna we want help you in those areas. So uh, it, it, it can involve that. Romans chapter 12, we read it earlier, verse one. It says, I plead with you to give your bodies to God uh, as a living sacrifice. And then it goes down to say, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Be reminded of that, that you can change your behaviors and how you adapt in the world and in whatever by changing the way you think. How do we do that? It doesn't have to be difficult. It could be an index card on the dash of your car with a verse that you meditate on and you process and you think about all the time. It could be on your mirror in the bathroom, a verse of scripture, a promise from the Lord that is constantly before you so that you are what? Thinking about the things of the Lord. Our, our mental health is, is very, very important to God. My mom, uh, she used to have these little, little catchphrases, whatever, and, and they're true, and yet I, I hated them as a kid, right? Because she always said, garbage in, garbage out. Right? She used to always say that to me. I was like, oh, stop it or whatever. But she is right. Right? You put, put junk in and it's going to come out. The social media that you scroll through every day and gripe and complain or whatever, it's going to come out. The movies, the influence, the media, the music, whatever it is, the influence you come in, put into your life is going, it's, it's going to come out. The toxic relationships that, that draw you away from Jesus, it's going to come out. 
harboring unforgiveness towards someone that the Bible says you should forgive them not just one time or seven times or whatever, but 70 times seven. My goodness, that was a pretty important statement, right? That when we harbor unforgiveness, it, it's going to come out. If we understand that inputs yield outputs, then let's change the inputs. Some of you that, that have commutes to work, change the talk radio and put on worship music and, and change the inputs and process and think through things of the Lord. I love the phrase that Jesus um, says in John chapter 15. It says, but if you remain in me, or there's another way to say it, if you abide in me and my words in you, you may ask for anything you want, it'll be granted. When you produce much fruit, remember that phrase from Genesis, be fruitful and multiply? Jesus said, when you produce much fruit, you're my true disciples, and this brings great glory to my Father. The psalmist writes it this way, I have set the Lord before me. Paul said to set your mind on things above. I love, there's a, 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 a late a, a monk, that his name's Brother Lawrence, he says it this way, to practice the presence of God. Isn't that interesting? To practice the presence of God. How do you do that? You continually keep the things of the Lord in your mind and he cannot, you cannot think of two things at one time. You just can't. So if you're always thinking about the news, if you're always thinking about social media, if you're always thinking about the other stuff, there's no room for the things of the Lord. That's why scripture says to take every thought captive and bring it into submission. How do we do that? By replacing those negative thoughts with things of the Lord. There's a, there's, a, uh, there's a worship song that just came out a couple weeks ago. A friend of mine wrote it from uh, a church in Colorado Springs and, and uh, it's, just, it's called Even If. And it, it's talking about the dedication and the determination of, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? That they said, even if, King, if, even if the Lord doesn't deliver us from this fiery furnace, even if, we're still gonna praise him. We're still gonna worship him. Can I tell you, the words of that song have been in my spirit for the last three or four days, just in a powerful way. It's abiding, and it's what I am abiding in. And it, it is, God, I don't, I don't necessarily want my praise to be contingent upon the outcomes. I want my praise to be contingent upon you, and you alone. What does that mean? That means changing the way you think, abiding in that. Let me give you some recommendations and then we're gonna wrap up. Practical message today, just of an encouragement, but I wanna give you some, some things to, to maybe lean into as it relates to training um, how you think and some resources that have been helpful for me. Um, I love to read, I love, I, I love uh, not every book is perfect, but they got nuggets, so pull from them. Um, Craig Rochelle has a great book called Winning the War in Your Mind. Go get it, read it, it's great, it's awesome. Practical, it's really easy read. Um, Dallas Willard, uh, he's such a smart man. Um, he has a book called Renovation of the Heart. Renovation of the Heart has a couple uh, chapters in there about renewing your mind. It's incredible, he's a deep thinker, great. Um, I'm, I'm right now in the middle of this book uh, from John Mark Comer has written called Practicing the Way. It's talking about apprenticeship and, and becoming more like Jesus and how we abide in Jesus. It's just, it's been a little bit, it's pretty transformational. And then finally, um, I wanna highly recommend um, one of the courses that we're gonna be doing this fall here at Calvary. Pastor Kim uh, leads this uh, uh, course and it's called Emotionally Healthy Relationships. Pete Scazzaro uh, has written a series of books called Emotionally Healthy Leadership and Discipleship. In fact, every one of our small group leaders goes through uh, the training, uh, emotion, Emotionally Healthy Leadership, and it's been transformational. The small group leaders that you see around uh, in the rooms and, and that lead the small groups, they've all gone through it. We have that group in our house, and it really does. It digs deep into the emotional health of those that are called to lead. And I'm telling you that God uses men and women um, in, in, in those spaces that have, have a unique anointing, not just in the preaching gifts, but in the teaching gifts to help us grow in, in our relationships. And I highly recommend, um, Kim, that's September and October, right, coming up. It's open, who's, who's it open to? Anybody sign up? You'll see that on the webpage. It's considered a, a, a small group that'll be, be registered for and don't just, you know, all that stuff. You'll see information coming up uh, in the next few months there and on the website. But in the meantime, go get any of those books. It's great. I'm telling you, it, it'll, it'll help you. How do we 
navigate our spiritual health and our physical and mental? Well, first, we recognize that they're related. And then we, we make a determination not to play favorites, not to focus everything on our mental health and forget our physical health, but not to be so concerned about our physical health that we never grow deep spiritually. And if we do that, we become imbalanced and we portray to the world a, an incorrect image of God that, is, that has created us to offer back to himself a healthy body physically, mentally, and spiritually. And when we do that, we are a, a more effective disciple of Jesus. I want to conclude with this quote from the book that I'm reading right now called Practicing the Way. He says this, apprenticeship to Jesus is about turning your body into a temple. And then I love this phrase, a place of overlap between heaven and earth. I've just been kind of ruminating on that, that phrase, a place of overlap between heaven and earth. If we're called to be kingdom builders and advancing God's kingdom, then I believe that, that accurately describes how we can be a reflection of God's grace in our community. It says this is the single most extraordinary opportunity in the entire universe, to let your body become God's home, and that opportunity is set before you every single day. Are my physical and mental health related to my spiritual? Yeah, they are. And we should steward every one of those very well. Bow your heads with me today. Father, I love you. <coughs> I thank you so much. I thank you so much that you've called each and every one of us to be healthy. You've called us to offer our bodies back to you as living sacrifices of worship. God, help us to understand the, the depth of what that means. Help us to grow deeper in our relationship with you as we steward both our physical and our mental health. God, we know that as we do that, it, it helps us be healthy. It helps our spiritual life. It helps us be a better witness to the world. And God, I pray that this morning, you would allow just this very practical word of encouragement to help us grow deeper and to challenge us in one area in our physical and maybe one area in our mental this week to, to increase the level of health in how we think or how we act so that it would be a reflection of the image that you have created in our lives and we could be a greater witness to this world. God, I'm so grateful that you've created in us the, the potential to be your image bearers in this world. God, help us not to lose that. Help us not to lose that. Keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I wanna ask you a question today. If you're in this room and, and maybe the idea of spiritual health is one that you haven't really focused on and the truth of it is is that the, the scripture says that we all, we fall short of God's glory. And the scripture says that's called sin. When, when we do things and when our life is not lined up with God's plan for our life, our heart, there's this need for forgiveness. And the Bible says that Jesus is the only way that we can be restored into a right relationship with him by accepting his gift of forgiveness on the cross. One of the great privileges that we have as believers is to, to invite other people to walk along this journey with us as we follow Jesus. See, Jesus did the same thing when he saw those potential leaders. He came to them and he said, hey, come and follow me. And they began to be, be more like him as they followed him, but they had to take that first step. And so if that's you today and you say, you know what, Pastor John, I've never begun a relationship with Jesus, but I would like to today and I would love for you to pray with me. The way that I can, can know who we're praying together with is by you to simply just raise your hand and maybe draw eye contact with me. And I, I'd love to recognize you just so that we can pray together in this room. If that's you today and you're here, would you just raise your hand all over this place and say, Pastor John, would you include me in this prayer today to ask Jesus to come into my heart to forgive me of my sins and begin a relationship with me? Is there anyone today? I want to wait just a second. 
I'd love to pray together with you. Amen. 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 Church, would you stand with me all over this room? And as you stand, I'm going to ask the prayer team to come forward to the front, and some of them will be at the back. If you didn't raise your hand just a minute ago, and you should, we've got some prayer team, and you should have, and you know that, and it's kind of one of those things like, ah, I should have taken that chance. We would love to pray together with you. Quite honestly, if there are moments of, uh, that, that you've had today in the message that say, I need to do better in this space, and I would love to, to have someone agree together with me for that, then we would love to pray together with you about that and that, that commitment. Sometimes it helps just to have someone be with you on that journey. So we would love to pray together with you. Finally, Scripture says in James that if anyone is sick, if anyone has a need, that they should call for the elders of the church to pray for them. And the, the prayer of faith, when we anoint with oil, the prayer of faith will save the sick and, and God honors those prayers. And so as, as every week, we don't, we don't want to forget the opportunity to pray together with you. And so in a minute we're going to be dismissed, but, but that just means it gives you an opportunity to come and let us pray together with you and fulfill scripture. I understand the message has been a little bit different today, and quite honestly, it probably is one of those where, where we need to put some roots down a little bit deeper and just process through, because I believe that God is calling each and every one of us to be physically and mentally healthy so that our spiritual health is all tied up in that, and we are greater witnesses in this community, and we are greater reflections of God in, in the spaces that we are in. Boy, I love that scripture in Romans that we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to worship. We were created to worship him. I believe I'm in a room of people that would join together with, with me and say, God, I wanna offer to you the, the, the most honorable and perfect as it can be worship and sacrifice in this body that I can. I wanna steward this well so that I can offer to the Lord that, that reasonable act of worship that he's asked us to do so powerfully in his word. Amen? Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you in your coming and in your going and may you continue to be a healthy reflection of God's grace into this community. God bless you. You're dismissed. We'll see you back Wednesday for prayer in our Bible study at seven o'clock. God bless you. If you need prayer, we'd love to pray together with you. Let's have a great week.